ads not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com. Keisha. Oh, she wanted to go. She wanted the whole song to play today. I wanted to loop it. You know what? It's on this soundboard. There's like a little, um, you know, like the boomerang signal from mm-hmm. looks like the infinity signal. And it, it was clicked. I didn't click it, but maybe I just wanted to hear it on a loop. I you love know, it. You put it, you put it on loop on purpose. <laughs> Y'all, I was she you like, more, more time to, in your Amazon. Y'all, she has Corey. She has choreography for (laughs) that is what you guys don't see there's a whole dance to it and she adds like a couple of new steps every episode (laughs) oh my god if y'all saw me dance you would you would know that's not true you guys welcome to match me abroad monday it's mary Payne here i've got keisha we're going to be talking about season one episode 11 playing with matches and um you know what else is happening today keisha what? We're gonna be we're gonna be recover, um, recording for love during lockup. We got an episode of that coming up on Monday too. <sighs> My life is complete now that it's back on television. They was it two, how was it ten weeks they were gone? I don't know. You're the one watching Mama June, not me. Okay, you know what? Mm-hmm. It's a good filler for the time that we're waiting for. I wish that it were Mama June and then love to, love after lockup. That you would mean be like the back to back, Friday night. back okay. to back. That would gotcha. be trash Fridays for sure. Right there, <laughs> <laughs> we go from dumb to dumber, like in the course of two hours. Like that, that would that would be um, possibly a brain overload right there because there's yeah. a lot. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I'm sorry that Mama June is over for you, but mm-hmm. I'm glad for us. That we've got love during lockup. That episode's going to be out today as well, guys, on Monday. And um, Keisha and I are just going to be working triple time in addition to the three 90 day franchises that I'm covering. I don't and know. And Bravo. How you do it. I don't I either. I don't know how you do it. I really don't. I don't either. I, I, I don't. I, 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 you're Superwoman or you're highly caffeinated or you're on crack. Something is going on over there because I don't know how you do it. And then you take notes for all of these shows. Yes, I do. It's a lot. Mm -mm. It is a Mm -mm. lot. So I got to tell you, I'm out here doing the Lord's work for y'all, but this match me abroad and then um, love during lockup. It's it's only going to be three weeks where we're going to have these double episodes. And then after that, we'll go back. It'll just be love during lockup on Mondays, still 90 day on Tuesdays, still barely Bravo shades of Bravo, whatever you want to call it on Thursdays. (laughs) Then we got 90 day UK coming out on Wednesdays on prime. We got, um, 90 day the other way coming out on hey bunky on the weekends it's um wow there's there's nothing you can't tell me about these people and also i'm getting i'm getting all the cast confused like i'll be like this person's on i hmm. bet Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i don't know how you do it i I I literally would just describe the person y'all know which one i'm talking about the one with the blue eyes (laughs) and the brown hair i can't remember her name but she always says this or she says that that would be me i would know none of these people if it's love after lockup, we have to go. And they've got the tattoos up the neck. And that wouldn't even narrow it down. <laughs> I know. A lot of neck tattoos. A lot There's of a lot neck going tattoos. on on this new season. They dug deep. They dug real deep for these dummies. They really did. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Digging deep for dummies. That's the, si- that's the side name of... Love yeah, dig, yeah, digging deep for dummies. They, yeah, they dug down deep. Good job, Matt Sharp. Um, I like it. I like it. I can't wait to discuss it with you. So we mm-hmm. will. Um, that will be out today, also on Monday. So let's talk about Match Me Abroad. We've got um, this episode eleven here, episode eleven of thirteen, and we're going to start with Stanika, Jackson, Mississippi, my hometown, and Nora Dean. All right. Okay, All right. hold on, ha- hold on. Did, did, okay. did you hear this about Nora Dean? 
that what? he Tell was me. on an episode of Gordon Ramsay. Okay, I saw that. I saw like a, a picture of it. Yeah. Yes, and it, it, like if you type in Gordon Ramsay milks a camel or eats a camel, something like oh. that, you'll you'll see Nordine. But uh-huh. he mm-hmm. doesn't go by Nordine. He goes by like Jamel. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hmm. Interesting. Well, maybe he has a couple of names and they just used the one that was easier. Was he like featured on the show or was he a background character or he was just. No, because like he's, a- he's walking and talking with him. Really? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Huh. Yeah, a lot of these people are actors. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I wonder if he's just one of the people that just likes to go hop from reality show to reality show, hoping to make it big and have his own show one day. Yeah, could be. Could be. Hmm. All right, well, let's start with them. She looked great on this date, by the way. This is her best look yet. By far. Yes, it is. She looks good. She looks great. That, that, that. One, that one shoulder short dress, she looks yes. really cute. Had those yes. love earrings on. She looked great. So um, now i got to tell you something, because you know I don't understand about wigs. But mm-hmm. um, assuming her hair is a wig. It is. There's no it, assumption. It is. Okay, okay, I think it always looks really good and on point, and mm-hmm. it never looks different. It always looks the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you it's never a wig. See any, but you never see any of like the sticky stuff or anything. Because she doesn't have a lace front wig on. Oh, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Okay, so quick wig wigology right here. So lace okay. is where it is glued down uh-huh. so that it looks like it's your skin and that, that right. the hair is coming from your skin on your head. So that's yeah. when it gets the glue and all that other stuff. What she has on, and you keep that on, okay? You just tie that part down at nighttime or if you're around the house, but you keep it on. Okay. What she has is a regular wig where she takes it off every night. So there's okay. no glue. She doesn't have any of the baby hairs or anything like that because it's just your regular wig. Okay. Yeah. But okay. how does it, it stays on with what? What kind of adhesive makes it stay on? She has no adhesive on there at all. So she either just puts it on there. It has clamps already in there. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, you can tell she takes it off every night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it yeah. always looks the same, and I think it looks really good. Yeah. She she did okay. it a little bit different this episode. Well, let's see. Of course she, had I just tie, tie, she, she had it tied back a little bit. She was looking a little, trying to look a little bit extra glamorous. Oh, okay. Well, I just think I, just, I think she looks great. I love this dress. So She looked good. Yeah, she's, of course, always doing too much. She's like, oh, gosh, I'm going to fall. Oh, woo. You know, she's always just sort of extra. Big country um, ass is what I say. <laughs> she does. I'm like, stop. That's me for me, and I'm extra as hell. I'm like, just stop. They, I don't even know if they understand what you're saying and why you're hooping and hollering. Like, just. Stop. Yeah, I think that's right. I think. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. I think they probably don't understand why she's. They have no hard. idea why she's doing that. <laughs> So they sit down, um, you know, and I know that this is the way that they eat, you know, with the mm-hmm. with the poofs on the floor. I got to tell you something. For me, mm-hmm. I would be like, mm-hmm. uh-uh, my back hurts. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Uh-uh. So she's I would have like, never Whoa. got down. I, I would have never made it down. I'm like, where's, I, I need, I know there's a chair somewhere around. I need, or give me like 10 more pillows to sit on top of because this ain't going to work. I, I would have to get up. I'd have to get on all fours and then stand up. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to just get up from the side like she did. I was like, wow. No, wow. my whole ass would have been out trying to get up off that. Oh, yeah. Like I, was, that. I was worried about that, too. Yes. So they order wine and water and orange juice, which is kind of but strange. Maybe, I was like, I, I, I like that. I love a good gl- uh, orange juice in a wine glass. That is that is elegant to me. OK. All right. I, I, I just thought some. it was weird. I was like, ooh, red wine and orange juice. Okay, whatever. I guess maybe that's how you make sangria. I don't know. So oh, there you go. Yeah, I guess it is. I think so so yeah. he says, um, he says, I have surprises for you on this date. And then this dancing woman comes out, mm-hmm. uh, like a belly dancer, and they get up and they dance with her. Both of them do. And of course, he's mm-hmm. like, This is for the this is for the ladies, it's not for me. But right. he gets up and he does it. She says she likes his dance moves. He was cute. And he has some moves. Yeah, he, he was cute. Good rhythm and everything. Yeah. She says, well, he's just outdoing himself and you, you can't believe it, but I'm speechless with this. And mm-hmm. they're talking and she was like, you know, I, I came on this not knowing what would happen, but we really meshed into each other's world. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, he says, yeah, I feel like I've known you forever. 
and they talk about, yeah, we're happy to find each other. I'm glad this worked out. Mm -hmm. So then he says, listen, I'm a grown man now. I'm 41. Mm -hmm. I don't need to waste any more time. So we're going to need to talk about serious things. We've got to talk about the next serious step. Now, I did like, like her talking. I like her talking. And she like, goes, uh, my next deck is, step is just to see if he wants to come visit. So, yeah. What's his next? She was like, so what's his next step? Yeah. I 100% agree with her because I have to, you know how I am. I always have to remind myself that it's only been a few days because in yes. my head, I'm thinking that since their first date, up until where we are right now in the episodes, they've been talking. So what are we, 12 weeks in, 11 weeks in? In my head, they've been talking this whole time for 11 weeks. And it's only been like, like two weeks. a week. Yeah, yeah, two weeks That's, total, I think. Yeah, they but, held but hands, she was they haven't kissed or nothing. Mm -mm. But they, I mean, they were texting, you know, while she was mm -hmm. out and about. So at least they sort of had that. As far as anybody else on this show, these they have the most relationship of anybody, really. So yeah. yeah. Maybe Harold has seen his girl as many times, you know? Two times. So now, right. Mm -hmm. So now we see Michelle. Okay. Now, I am still can't remember who it was. Somebody said Michelle looks like, but it's going to drive me crazy. I read it like on the Twitter or something, and then I quickly forgot it, but it's whoever it is. I is saw exactly it too. Dead. And, and it, was, we, it was spot on. And we can't remember it, now. Can't remember oh, who it this was. is gonna bother me now because it, I it, saw it too, and I'm like, "Oh, that's exactly who she looks yeah. like." Mm -hmm. Can't it. remember it. Somebody let us, us know. Us in our so, old age. It's us in our know. old age. We can't remember I know. shit. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. So she's in her room, and the room service lady comes, and she was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this! I've never gotten <laughs> room service in my life." I was like, How is well, that you possible? Not, you've not been living, girl. You're 34. No. Girl, come on. And I, that was hard to believe. And she was, was really excited. Like she, for real, that was her first time experiencing room service. Room service is the whole reason to go to a hotel. Uh, no shit. I live, yeah. there are some days I just stay in the hotel and order room service all day long. It's great. It's the best. Yeah, it is. So Take she's like, oh, well, right. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I thought it was $12. How did it get to be 70? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> So she says she's excited about the second date with Dr. Michael, and they're going to see if they should go forward. They're going to meet at this coffee shop and then walk to their next date. Katerina suggested a date where they could be more vulnerable, but she doesn't know what it is. So mm -hmm. then we see him outside the coffee shop, and he's like, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous for the date, but I'm always this way. He does sort of talk like a robot, and I am mm -hmm. a little bit nervous, and I always am for a date. And but he looks good, except for that cockatoo head. He can't help it. He's got a thick hair and he just hadn't thinned it and he just likes to puff it up. And he, he think he's trying to look taller, maybe. But it keeps falling. Like the front part keeps falling down. Like it he doesn't use that got to be in a yellow can and that wax. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Because no. it's just not holding up. He just needs to get it thinned a little bit. Because he's floppy so cute. hair. It's floppy hair. Yeah. 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 So she says she she walks up and she's like, "Wow, like you look so great, you look so stylish." And he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, you know, European cities, you have to be fashionable." And mm -hmm. she goes, "Oh yeah, it's funny because like Americans sometimes just wear pajama pants." He goes, "Yeah, I know. That's how you can tell." All right. <laughs> That's a great point. It was what I've already what I've told my kids. Like when we're going to Europe, I go, "There'll be no sweatpants. There'll be no Ooh. pajama bottoms. It'll be Ooh. like." Not even blue jeans. You can wear like khaki jeans or like black right. pants or like, but we're, we're not, we're not going to be pointed out like the Americans. Do your we're kids gonna... go out of the house with pajama pants on? Oh, of course. Yes. Yes. <sighs> it's the if worst. If I catch scholar doing it and I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like those I are know. pajamas. Like. I know. It's I awful. And they're okay with it. And she has the audacity to walk out with ones with like 20 buckies, the be Bucky Beavers, yes, all over. I'm like, oh, uh -huh. this is just so. I hope you don't see anyone who knows us. I that know, just I don't get it's it. It's awful. I know, and it then is. they wear like um, shower shoes, slides. They wear slides and pajama bottoms, and like I'm ready. I'm going to school. I was like, I, don't don't people no. you know go to that school? Like that's so embarrassing. It really is. And kids and they these the days, it's, yeah, it's true. Just no fashion at all. Just no, dreadful. They don't. They yeah. don't give a shit. So mm -mm. 
Did you notice he was carrying a red gym bag? Girl, I was like, where is he going with it? Are we going rock climbing? What is in this bag? Like, it was bigger than Chad's backpack. It wasn't even yeah. a backpack. It was a full on bag. Yeah, it was like a full gym bag. I was like, where are you going? You got a trip after this? Trip planned? It, go to the hospital? In my head, going? I'm thinking he's trying to beat me so that someone in a white van can come pick up my body <laughs> and it's part of human trafficking. That is because wow. I'm paranoid about that. Kind of, yeah, I'm super paranoid about human trafficking. That is what I would have thought. I'm like, we can go on this date, but you cannot bring that bag with you. Leave it at the cafe, <laughs> tell them to put it behind the counter for you, and you'll come back to get it after I've already made it to my hotel. Like, you no. can't bring the... We're going to go on that the bag. date, but you can't bring that bag. That, that is crazy to me that he had that bag. I don't know. It was weird. It was, And it was never yeah. mentioned. But she has a very big, ugly purse. So I thought, well, that is her. <laughs> that's her. Like, maybe they were told to bring gym bags. That's what I thought. But Mary no, Payne, she had that purse later, too. It was terrible. That terrible purse. That is like, I was wondering if you, you noticed it. Because it's almost got that, remember several years back they had the white Louis Vuitton with the colorful you know yes. LV and all. it looked like a knockoff version of that like a horribly bad version of that oh well you got a better look me. at it than I did I, it just looked like beige with like flowers on it or something I was like what it, is it this was, it bad. was something that sh per people in a nursing home carry around it and they have their knitting yes. things in it it was yeah. bad yeah, yeah, that's a great yeah. call. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, now that we've ripped apart their bags. Um, <laughs> so Katerina meets them at this studio and they walk in barefoot. So I was like, okay, maybe she told them like, bring a bag because you may have to take off your shoes, but you still didn't need a giant bag. For that. Anyway, we'll, we're never going to figure it out. So no, we're um, not. they walk in barefoot and she says, I want to introduce you to my amazing husband, John Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then she says he is the premier, wonderful, worldwide known teacher of energy and body work. She and is she proud of everything like, her man does. Well, she acts like we're supposed to know who he is. I was like, okay. Maybe they do over there in the Czech Republic. but Maybe. maybe he's Regardless, she is proud of her man right there. She sure I is. mean, she rolled out the red carpet for him big time. Yeah. And she was like, no shoes in the studio. So... <laughs> John Hawkins has them sit facing each other and he talks about the heart and how normally you're in your head. And so you have to get into your heart and Michael sort of interrupts him and is asking him about like, Oh, so we're trying to get out of like our subconscious. And I think he's just trying to understand like what this exercise is. I'm sure this was probably like an hour long and we saw three minutes. Right. So Michael's like, so any emotion can come out in the process. He says, right. Emotions will come out if you're only thinking with your heart. So mm -hmm. Michelle's like, Ugh. Like, he's too in his own head. He can't open up. Like, he's interrupting. Or I thought he was just trying to, like, understand what they were doing. Like, Yeah, I would have had a yeah. lot of questions as well. Like, why are we on the floor? Why don't we have on shoes? Yeah. Exactly what is your title again? Because I don't understand what it why is. Why are you going to chair what are we, we doing? Don't? <laughs> no shit. That would have been the first question. Like, can we get chairs as well? Because um, I don't want to roll on this floor. No. So... And the talking head, John Hawkins outside says, my impression is that Michael is really annoying. He's too in his own head and Michael is really needy and a needy man needs a lot of energy. It's like, wow, what are we not seeing? Because Michael seems perfectly nice. He seemed really nice, but I did giggle when he said annoying because I can see where he could come off a little bit annoying. But to me, Michelle's annoying. Same. I, so, I, I at the know. end of this, I came away from this kind of hating her. She's not very likable. No. There's just something about her. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's just something very annoying about her. But it was still funny whenever Katarina's husband, Mr. Katarina, said that about him, though. I know. I was Poor like, dude. stop. So he has them sit and, you know, on the floor and put their hands on their heart and he's saying something blah 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 and she he mm -hmm. says like what do you want from him like when you see him and so she leans forward and gives him like a little hug and snuggles him and then john hawkins says um let yourself go and be supported by her so he goes over to her and sort of like snuggles in her lap just like she just did to him the same thing right. he does the same thing back to her and he kind of puts his head in her lap and then mm -hmm. 
obviously lots of words are being said that we're not hearing because then right. he's like tears rolling Crying. down his face. Yeah. Yeah. And John Hawkins is saying most men and boys are brought up to not show emotion and tough it out. So it's good to let these things out. So he's doing exactly what sort of they're leading yeah. him to do, which is to, to like let your man wall down and be vulnerable. Yeah. And, um, when the head and the lap thing is over, John says to Michael, like, how do you feel? And he says, oh, it's interesting, right? Because, like, a mother gives a son a warm hug, and sometimes mm -hmm. maybe a men will need that hug, too. Which right. I thought, like, okay, wow, he's actually. That makes sense, yeah. He, he's he's her, emotionally, what did, what did Katarina say? Emotionally naked or. Yes. Yeah, he's he's nude right now he fall he followed the assignment and for yep. and then for the guy to say to him what do you feel and he says oh well i feel like as little boys we get that but maybe as men we need it too yeah i thought the whole thing was so like wow this is Me beautiful too. and then michelle goes yeah nothing turns me on faster than being compared to your mom i should have trusted my instinct and moved on after the first date i was like you're a bitch I'm like, Michelle, you and all your 500 teeth need to go sit your ass down somewhere. Because obviously you were not broken down uh, naked emotionally or whatever. She's just a bitch. She that was, was a so bitch. rude. This is rude, what she rude. wanted. This is what mm -hmm. she wanted. This is what she asked for. Yep. And he followed the assignment and did what the energy coach was telling him, which was yep. to get vulnerable and yep. say his feelings. And then she was nasty about it. Well, then the damn energy coach called him annoying. All I he know. did was ask questions and do the assignment exactly like how it's supposed to be. I don't, there's no way. I get that you're saying that there's things that we, of course, there's things we didn't hear or see. But I feel as though if he were being like totally annoying, they would have captured that. Yeah, like if he would have kept interrupting. Or, yeah. Yeah. But we only so, saw him ask one question. I don't know. He's I just, we didn't he's going to ask questions. We didn't get the whole story and it came, it no. came off like she was a complete biatch because she says after they like sit there and they're facing each other, she says um, to John Hawkins and to Dr. Michael, she says, I'm so glad we did this on the date, but is there any chemistry here? And poor Dr. Michael's like, I thought I was supposed to be vulnerable and let my walls down. And now you're telling me you have no chemistry with me. And I don't know. She wanted him to open up and then she shit all over it. So I don't like She I don't just like doesn't it. like him. She just doesn't like him. Say you don't like him and move on because I think he's cute. He's a doctor. He's mm -hmm. sensitive. And it's their second date. Yeah. He's European. He speaks perfect yes. English. He's yes, a he professional. Does. He's yep. good looking. What else do you want? Come on. I mean, the only uh, the only red flag was the red bag. <laughs> we still don't know what's in the red bag. That no, was a we problem don't. for us. That's a problem for us. Y'all, summer is here and your wardrobe needs an upgrade, right? Instead of getting this flimsy, fast fashion stuff, spend your money wisely on high quality essentials that is going to last beyond the season. This is what I've been trying to do. And I've been shopping on Quince. This is my spot. It's like a secret spot, but I'm telling you about it for quiet luxury without paying the luxury prices. You guys, they have must have items like 100% European linen, Oh, I love a linen pant, luxurious mulberry silk shirts, Italian leather bags, 14 karat gold jewelry, and Mongolian cashmere sweaters. I got two sweaters for $100. They're $50 each. They're cashmere. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. They are timeless classic styles that will never go out of fashion. I got these punty pants. They're straight leg, not... Um, not skinny leg because um, I've been told the skinny leg is out. So I got these straight leg ponty pants. The quality is like a $200 pant. I would get anywhere else. And like I said, I got two cashmere sweaters. This is going to be for my European trip. I have to pack all these basics. They all go together. Gorgeous. Ingrid is about to go to Europe this summer. And she got two of these washable silk like spaghetti strap dresses that are going to be perfect on her vacation because she could throw them in her bag. They're washable gorgeous maxi dresses. I mean, oh, perfect. So that's what I got. And I bet if Ingrid would have gotten that silk dress from anywhere else, it would be $200. I'm not even kidding. So if you're wondering how they do it, Quince partners directly with top factories to cut out the cost of the middleman, pass the savings onto us. And they work with factories that use safe, 
ethical and responsible manufacturing practices and premium eco-friendly fabrics and finishes so you can feel good about getting these high quality items at a great price they're going to last longer i'm all about getting these classic pieces and then adding on some fun things you know with it but having these classic pieces that you can mix and match you guys i'm so excited about quince so upgrade your closet this summer with quince right now you're going to go to quince dot com slash pink shade to get free shipping 365 day returns on your order that's q u i n c e dot com slash pink shade for free shipping and 365 day returns quince dot com slash pink shade and you're going to thank me all right so then katarina and michelle meet in katarina's office and michelle mm -hmm. says um that was a really good idea for a date and Katarina says, yeah, my husband noticed that the longer the session went on, the more annoyed you were with Michael. Yeah. But you didn't really say anything. And she was like, <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I just, I want to meet some other people. And she says, would you like to go out with Michael again? And she said, no, I'm good. No, I don't but think so. But why? I don't, I, I think yeah. she's a bitch. I think she, she comes off to me as one of those women who's overly sexual. Okay. I kind of get a vibe like that from her. Like, hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think she would be okay with doing the do on a first date. That's just okay. Not, <laughs> not, not that there's anything wrong. Don't come I, for me. I'm just saying. Do, do it if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I think that he was too nice of a guy for her. Mm hmm. I do. The thing, I think, uh, yeah, I think you're right, but I think that she asked for more sensitive. Get, get, she did. see if they have chemistry. And so mm -hmm. Katarina's like, let me show you a way to find out if you have chemistry. Do this heart yeah. energy thing. He did everything she asked. He didn't go. This is kind of weird. I'm uncomfortable. Whatever. Yeah. You know, he didn't do that. He was like, all right, I'm game. And yeah. then she shit all over it when he did it. She sure did. Well, did so you see the really look on her that. face whenever he was in her lap and she's kind of yeah. like rubbing his back and she's like she's looking like a total bitch That's she was like oh it's like a cat i was like well this is what you wanted yeah you're not being very princess like michelle not no. at all no mm -mm. nope so katarina says i think what she needs is a very strong man an emotionally mature man and i've got a new mm -hmm. guy for her his name is pavol mm -hmm. I, I was writing pav pavo pavol anyways pavol p-a-v-o-l Yes. So he's cute. Mm -hmm. So he is a very mature and emotionally on the same level as her and has a great sense of humor. I don't know why Katarina thinks she's so emotionally mature. She's rude. She seems really immature to me, if you ask me. Yeah. She, she, and she contradicts herself all the time. Uh, yeah. All the time. I'm not digging her. Yeah. So mm -mm. she says he's um, has a great sense of humor and thinks this will be a good match. And I said, again, why is she carrying that giant ugly purse? This is on the date. She's like in a cocktail dress, but this like giant ugly like canvas bag. I'm not, I'm upset about the purse. It's a, a lot to be upset about because it is purely ugly. Like my mom. You're going would, on a date, take a small bag. Yeah. She, I don't think she has style. Okay. I think you're right. I don't think, right. remember, the we, oh, saw, remember the shoes. Remember the shoes. Yeah, the flat yeah, shoes. Yeah. yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're going in this vintage red car, which was pretty cool. Yeah, and, it was. Um, and she's like, "Oh, he's dressed to the nines. He's good looking." Mm -hmm. They get in the car and talk, and he says he's thirty four. He's from mm -hmm. Slovakia, but now he lives in Czech Republic. He's been out of the dating scene for three years, and he would describe himself as kind with a good heart. And it's hard for him because women in the Czech Republic want a bad guy. Okay. Okay. And he's not that. So they draw, well, I don't know, maybe she won't like him. So probably they, not. they go to some kind of like fancy hotel, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And they walk in and they're like two masquerade type masks that say, yes. um, pick, a, pick a mask and enter. And I was like, mm -hmm. some advice shut crap going on? We find out in the preview. I would have, I would be like Dr. Michael. I would have lots of questions before I, I put on a mask too. and Me go too. into a room. Yeah. Like, I'm like, uh, I agree. where's the greeter or like, what the <laughs> hell's going on? I need someone to explain this to me. Like that could be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess cause they're filming a show, you know, but still I thought it was, because, yeah. you know, he was like, what's it? Cause she's like, where are we going? He's like, I don't know either. 
So I guess maybe now Katarina's like, all right, so she didn't like the roll on the floor energy healer. Now I'm going to give her like an overly sexualized date and see how she does with that. And you know? she's probably going to do very well with that because I think she's overly sexualized. I, that is, that is what I think of Michelle. You know, okay, I've never so maybe, Michelle from the first day we saw her. I've been trying to give her a, a break, but I think that, mm -mm, mm -mm. nope, no. turned on her. So, all right, let's go to Mark. Now, this oh, is a very boy. short scene with Mark. He says, you know, mm -hmm. he liked Huda. She's successful, motivated, a go-getter. And, you know, she wanted a commitment after two dates and wanted mm -hmm. to be boyfriend-girlfriend. And he was kind of rejected it. But now he's decided, okay, I'm going to, you know, honor what she said. And mm -hmm. I do think it's weird to commit when we're so far apart. But I'm going to meet with her it today. It is. It is weird. It's very yeah. weird. They've seen each other two times to be like, you're my girlfriend and I'll see you in six months. Yeah. So she needs to date Harold if that's the kind of commitment <laughs> she's looking for that quickly. Cause no, I, I thought that was total bullshit. I didn't like that. I didn't like that she did that at all. Well, I mean, Dina was like, women, you know, here do not like to think that you're dating around. They like to think they're the only one. So that's why she did that. So he's standing around waiting on the corner with her. He's trying to like make small talk with the crepe, uh, guy he's like i had a crepe I'm yeah stand here for a while <laughs> looks at a car it's not her people are walking by not yeah. her so he's texting her he's calling her and she doesn't answer she doesn't return the call so he leaves her a message and says i thought we were meeting today but you're a no-show so uh mm -hmm. hope you're okay just give me a call back i'll take care bye so yeah. he says it's embarrassing that i was standing on that corner and she said she'd it meet was. me and kind of cruel and uh it was it was and he says and maybe i learned something about her on our third date that i would have learned way down the line so maybe it was a blessing you know yeah you know i i can't stand huda because she actually made me feel sorry for mark and i never thought that day would come i think you're right was so nasty and here's the thing she says, I don't want you to go out on any more de dates. Well, bitch, aren't you on using a matchmaker as well? Aren't you going right. on other dates? Like, I didn't, I don't, the girl, I'm turning on the girls. The girls are, <laughs> something's wrong it with happens. them. I, I, yeah, that was cruel what she did to him. She could have just. Especially said, knowing it's being filmed, right? It wasn't like he could tell yeah. us like, oh, I was supposed to meet her and she didn't show up. We had to like watch it. Yeah. And he's in a fucking foreign country. Yeah. And you do that. And they, like, he doesn't like even know where to the, go. They're like across like, the street filming him. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. Yeah, that was, yeah, I would, I hope he does not have anything else to do with her. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now let's go to Chad. All right, so um, <sighs> Chad. Chad's out in the public park working out with Juan, um, <laughs> which is interesting because we saw on um, the other way, the other season that was just like last month um, with um, Gabe. Remember when he went to the public park and was working out with his uh, I didn't Isabel's watch it. I didn't watch it. I, didn't watch oh, it. I know who you're so talking good. about. I know yeah. who you're talking about, though. Yeah. Same thing, like public park with the weights. Yeah. Like that's well, that's a thing now that they have so. workout parks. You haven't seen those? Well, I've seen them, but it seems like more of a thing in Colombia than I've seen in the United States. Well, I haven't seen them where they have like what? What are the push? They have like full weight sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that. I've seen like the other things where you can work out while your kid is playing, but. Yeah, I don't know about that. The one that Gabe went to with Isabel's dad, they were like on stationary bikes and like barbells. Oh. It was like in the middle outside. Yeah. Oh, no. See, I don't even like to work. I don't like to be outside. So I'm most definitely not going to work out outside. I'm refer mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to work out. <laughs> no, me either. <laughs> me but either. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So anyway, Ch so Chad's working out uh, with Juan. He's giving him a hard time. He's giving Juan a hard time. Like, you need to work out more. And then he says, yeah, you need to put some weight on you. What are you, 100 pounds soaking wet with a hard on? That was pretty fucking funny, though. <laughs> well, I rewound it because I was like, did he just say, are you yes, 100 pounds soaking wet with a hard on? Yes. And, 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 Juan, and we all know Juan is little. He's a smaller guy. but uh, Juan's like, oh, gosh, I'm going to have to bleep that out. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what a phrase, what a phrase. So Chad says, yeah, it feels good. Now, you know, going from really not dating for three years to dating two beautiful women at the same time. Mm -hmm. So he tells Juan, he goes, I thought Maria was the one till I met Baba. Yeah. So then we How see did he Baba. think Maria was the one? That was they the had most awkward date in history. Six they, words they to could, each other. They could hardly understand one another. How was that? What? I agree. I, very strange. He's looking for a hot piece of ass. 
Well, it's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. So he says, um, so then we see Beba talk to Juan and Beba mm-hmm. tells Juan, you know, yeah, he's a really nice guy, but you know, he's not very direct. And I'm used to Latin mm-hmm. men that are very direct and our lifestyles are very different, but you know, you just don't know. So I would definitely like to wait and see and have another date just to wait and see. I'd like Good. to be on television. So it's true. So Chad asked Juan, well, you know, I'm into both of them, but I got to know, like, you think these women are um, interested in moving to the United States? Like, if they want to, don't want to move with me to Tennessee, like, that's a deal breaker. And Juan goes, remember what we talked about, about moving too fast? Like, do you think that's what you're doing, moving too fast? And he says, I understand that, you know, sometimes you don't want to move too fast, but sometimes you do have to ask that important questions. I'm not here for that long. Well, and- I kind of got to agree with Chad a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you you could say it generally, not like, do you want to yeah. move to the United States next week? But right, eventually, would you be, would you inter- be interested? It, yeah, would you be okay with doing? Yeah, I think that's a logical question, and I think yeah. they would probably say, yeah, I think they'd be okay yeah. with it. Yeah, I don't know. Baby seems to have a pretty good life. She seems. I think Baby would have a pretty good life wherever the hell she is. She's gonna have a I good know. time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So he says, I don't want to go on any more dates. I just want to focus on you know, Baba. And uh, Maria, that's it. And uh, I want to go out both of them again. And uh, I'm going to ask them together. if they want to move, not together, if At they the want to move time. to the U.S. And then my heart can decide which one it's going to be. Your right, heart is going to decide? His heart's going to decide. Chad, yeah. come on. And you none know of, what? No, none of this is going to work out. I would love to see a picture of the three girls he was engaged to. Oh, yeah. Somebody find that for us. Uh, I bet it's in that yeah. Match Me Abroad Facebook group, Geisha. Those people know everything. Those people are Ruth. Oh, my. I had to get off the other day. They were talking so bad about Harold. Oh, no. I don't want to know oh, that. Oh, no. It was bad. No, I don't want to hear uh, that. For me to say something's bad, it we'll was have to see. Bad. We'll have to see what they have to say about uh, Michelle's purse. See if they agree with us. Now, that is um, a conversation that I would join right there about the purse. The purse well, needs its own page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Twitter account, Melissa's Old Nose. We could make one right. called Michelle's Purse. <laughs> purse. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go. We're going to end with Harold. Okay, Harold, bless him. So we start where he has walked around the block to clear his head and um, wonders, am I really going to buy a ring for somebody? who hadn't texted me back in days, you know? <laughs> so he goes back in the store and he says, I've made the decision. She's worth it. And I am going to get a ring. Now, mm-hmm. did you see lots of, lots of places I saw posted about a Moldavite ring is mm-hmm. like, it's in the crystal world and the gems world. Like if you're into that stuff, like mm-hmm. you do not give somebody that it is like a oh. omen. And wherever, whenever you give somebody, now this is, you guys, loose interpretation of what I read. I don't really know what I'm talking about. But it's okay. something like, once you give somebody something with Moldavite, mm-hmm. whatever is that decision that day, is that's like sealed your fate for life. So if he was to give her like a Moldavite ring and she said no, then they're both like doomed for life. I'll have to ask Skylar about that because she knows all about that kind of stuff. Okay, so ask her about Moldavite, what it means. But it's like some super thing. Like you would ne- you you would never give somebody something with Moldavite in it. Never. Well, why the hell are they selling it in the jewelry stores? And because he's like this, this. I can't I can't sell this to anybody else. This sucker is he's not, he's not from here. <laughs> he cheated. This is just the person I've been waiting for. Boy, do I have the ring for you. I've been trying to get rid of this bad luck ring. (laughs) (laughs) So he says, um, um, I've decided she's worth it. And I think it's an important step to show my level of commitment. And I think she's special. I think Mm -hmm. she's the one. And I'd like to get a sapphire to match her eyes. And guy's like, oh, shit. Puts the multivite back. (laughs) Seven years more bad luck. (laughs) Shoot. So Katarina says this is the fastest proposal she's ever had, but Mm -hmm. Harold is taking a risk and following his heart and not a lot of people do that. And that's good for him. Right. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. the next day he's got on his nice new white shirt and Mm -hmm. he's packing and he's packing his ring 
and he's packing a, a coat and he's prepared mm. for everything and he even pulls his condoms out of the drawer Keisha. I didn't need to see that part at all just we could they could have skipped the Matt Sharp you could have skipped it. it you know how this just like we realize we're all sexual but it's yes. just some people you don't see as being sexual mm-hmm. Harold's like that to me it, it it's she's so boy like and just yeah he is like a little boy. He really He's like is a little very, boy. And, very like and a boy. I, yes. And I'm like, you don't need those condoms, Harold. Put that. Quit being silly. I just, I don't know. It's kind of like, mm, a little bit. Just, I don't know. But I mean, he's a full grown man and he's been used for sex before, as he told us. Yeah. So we know he's, not, he's, he's done it. He's not a virgin. So that's good. No, he's not. He's that's not. That's good. So we say he's going to be prepared for love, for engagement. Mm-hmm. For rain, for snow, he's ready. He's like the he's like the mailman. So he says, um, <laughs> he says, last time I talked to her was three days ago. Mm-hmm. The producer says, Oh, what happened? He said, She said, Why are you calling me so early? <laughs> okay, like okay. Now I felt that because Me too. Look, and after I get up, I need about an hour and a half to really be ready to speak to yeah. anyone. Yeah. So I, I I felt that text. Yeah. And he was like, well, I I was trying to call her because I hadn't heard from her, but uh, she seems to be more cavalier about the relationship, but I'm a little on edge of how this is going to go. She hasn't even confirmed our plans or if she's going to meet me at the train station or anything. So I was like, oh gosh. Well, she showed up, mic'd up. So obviously production has talked to her. So I felt good about that. Well, I'm not taking a train, a goat, Mm -mm. a donkey, a moped, a ship, Mm -mm. a Mm -mm. Tesla, Anywhere, if someone has a reply to my text messages in three days, giving me exact direct, confirming exactly where they're going to be, what time, what color shirt they're going to have on, I'm not going. Period. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I'm not Harold. I'm I'm not Harold though. He's built differently. She says. um, So he gets to the train station and he stands outside and he calls her. He's like, I don't know. I guess if she doesn't answer, I'll just turn around and go home. But she answers and she's like, Mm -hmm. Hi, Harold. What's up? He's like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's like well I'm like, I'm bitch the- i'm here I'm, wait, that's why i'm here wait where are you is the question talking about where am i <laughs> just like he's like well i'm here i've arrived at the train station i'm in a white shirt standing right out front you can't miss me and she goes well okay well then i guess i'll come get you and he goes okay just so casually like, yeah I bet she's. I bet she took time to take a shower, oh, feed yeah. her cats, water her plants. It was just too casual for me. My anxiety would have been through the roof if it's I were It's just Harold. totally two different, totally styles of communication. Yeah, you know, some people just aren't. They're like, okay, well, he said he's coming, so he's coming. I don't need to write back and say okay, like you know. And he, it's a totally different style of communication. So yeah, she she arrives. She looks really cute. And they um, hug and kiss, and which was cute. They, you know, she hugged mm-hmm. him. They kissed him right on the lips there. Yeah, he yeah. Just like, you hungry? You want to go get some food? Okay. So in her talking head, she was like, I don't know. I spend a lot of time at work, and I don't have time for calls and messages. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was like, it's great to see him again. It's great. I'm glad he's here. Yeah, sure. I just feel like, I think I mentioned this before, I will damn near get fired for somebody I like to text them back. I got to take a break. I'm going to the restroom. I'm taking my 15 minute smoke break just so I can text this person back, hear their voice or whatever. But Kayla's just not like that Mm -mm. at Mm -mm. at all. If I talk to him, I do. If I don't, I don't. So then in the car and he's like, you know, I got to tell you, I was, I was worried because I got, I texted you and I wrote you and I didn't hear back. And she Mm -hmm. goes, Oh yeah, I was in the shower. It's, like, <laughs> it's a whole like I gotta wash my hair. It was like I was in the shower for three days. You were in the shower, I, and at that point I said, "You know what? Take the mic off, pull over, take me to the nearest hotel. I'm done with this period." I was in the shower. Mm-hmm. Just in was the shower. Her excuse for three yeah. whole days. He was like, anyway, I'm glad I'm here now. And she's like, yeah, you're here now. So, all right. <laughs> they are met from one another. They are. Definitely. They are. Totally. Yeah. So they go to this restaurant and they sit down and like, yeah, this is nice. Look at the flowers. And he says, um, well, listen, you know, I- I'm only here till the end of the week. Okay. So everything here is accelerated. And she goes, yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> and he says, um, yeah, I, I have a list of things I-, I wanted to talk to you. I feel like I should get my list out and look at it because- when I stare into your eyes, I can't even think because nothing else matters. <laughs> and she goes, 
Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. <laughs> but go ahead. What are your questions? And he says, no problem. You- no problem. She says, no problem. No, no problem. problem. No. What are your questions? Go ahead. And he says, how do you feel about us moving quickly? Because my time here is almost up and I have to talk to you about important things. And she goes, okay. <laughs> she is so easy breezy. Easy Either that breezy. or she is always high. Hmm. I didn't think about that. Well, she hmm. could be. Oh, she could be. Did so? Did you see some of the um, in, in several Facebook groups? Apparently, people have hunted her Instagram page mm-hmm, and her Facebook mm-hmm. page, and supposedly she has cancer and had to have surgery, and she can't have kids, and now she's got to do chemo every fourteen days. And people are really like trying to decipher: is this really her or not? It seems like what she wrote was somebody said, "Like, are you still with Harold?" And she wrote back. After Harold came, I found mm-hmm. out I had cancer, had to have a surgery, I can't have children, and now I'm doing chemo every 14 days. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the timeline was with him, with him being there. So it could have been she meant like a month after he left, but I mean, I don't know. Right. Or, or the day after he left, like we don't know. But then yeah. she had to have surgery and she had to recover and then she had to do chemo. So right. assuming that's all true, mm-hmm. that's really, really sad. And yeah. it makes me want them to be together more. So she can come to the United States and be with him and they could be happy because I don't know. I don't think he ever I, said like having kids was important or anything. I feel like if it were true, Harold would move there with her. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. I think. But she said I, we're I, not I, together I, anymore. And right after he left, I found out I had a cancer. And obviously if she is bad at communicating, imagine how bad she'd be at communicating if she was in a health crisis. She really wouldn't be oh, communicating. Oh, God. Well, she wouldn't. <laughs> this is awful. She wouldn't text back for six months. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, she's just, she's really nonchalant about everything. And especially if you're going, going through something, she really would not feel the need to communicate. Yeah. At all. It'll be interesting to see what happens at, at the end of the show if they put up, like, the screen that says, like, Natalie met a guy, which I think we know is what happens. I think Natalie meets a guy in Columbia mm-hmm. that we don't see on screen, mm-hmm. um, and I think she's still with that guy. That's what I gleaned from my conversation with her. She didn't tell me that, but just the way she's or Juan Pablo. insinuated. Yeah. Or Juan Pablo. It's not, it's not Juan Pablo. So, uh, you, I saw in another group they were talking about Natalie, there, and someone goes, I think she should just date Juan Pablo. I'm like, see? I am not the only person who sees the chemistry. Juan Pablo's Kim probably married Mr. with four children, and his wife's going to come over here and get you. I mean, I can't fight. I can throw, <laughs> scream, cuss, and things like that. So uh, come for me. Come, come at me, bro. <laughs> well, next time on Match Me Abroad, mm-hmm. Michelle and Pablo go on a weird eyes wide shut date. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's they right. go in she with these masks on. They go in with these masks on. And she's mm-hmm. like, what's on the table? It looks like rose petals. And she was like, is that what she said? Is that a something? But it was a whip. It's a whip. She's like, yeah. is that a saber? But it was, like, it was a whip. I was like, are we, are we mm-hmm. whipping on the first date? Is that what we're doing? I want to show to change it to one of her princess gowns for the whipping. <laughs> <laughs> one of her party city. Okay. So, <laughs> right. Um, Mark tells Nina, yeah, who to send me up? And he says, I was hoping to leave Morocco with the girl of my dreams, but instead I'm leaving solo with nothing. And he tells Nina, he goes, you know, people just disappoint me. And Nina says, could the issue be, she gave you an ultimatum, but you hadn't given her an answer yet. And then he cries. What? I, I think he's embarrassed. I think his feelings are hurt because I think he did like Huda, Mm -hmm. but Nina did him dirty, dirty. And so did Huda. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And Nina needs to never pretend to be a matchmaker ever again. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So Nora Dean on their date asks Danica, um, so do you want to make it official? And then she must say something because then we see him saying, take me as I am. This is the offer. Oh, shit. Hmm. Mm. So I don't know. I Do you want to make it official? So does that just mean we'll be boyfriend, girlfriend, and then I'll come visit you in the United States? And that's what she wants, but we don't know. Sometimes she gets on that Match Me Abroad Facebook group and kind of acts like she didn't like him. And then somebody said something the other day about meeting the family, and she was saying, oh, the family was so nice. So I can't tell with her what's going on. And they stand her in that group. Oh, yeah. 
And oh, I'm yeah. just like, why are y'all dick riding her like this? Like, I there's something they love her in that group. Yes, they. And I, I don't know what they see. Maybe it's because she's in there, like making stuff, she's you know, active. commenting so much, real active in that group. Yeah. yeah, and I think people feel like, oh my gosh, I just talked to her and she was on this show. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, whatever. Who else did I see it, that they said in that group that Chad, um, maybe one of Chad's exes was in the group? And I think I wrote under the post, Chad's ex, show yourself. Like, who was it? Like, we I'm need st- to yeah. see her. Yeah, let me just look and scroll through to make sure I'm not remembering that wrong. But I do believe. Somebody said it was Chad's ex. Yeah, because that's 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 who it would have to be. Because that's we the only person. Need I yeah, to know everything about her, and I then ask her it. about the other fiancés. Right, right. Yeah, how come there's three? Right now. Mm-hmm. Um, then Harold says to Michaela, "The question is, my important question is, would you like to be my girlfriend?" Good, Harold. And then she, good. That was good. I'm glad he that did was that. Good. That and was didn't real good. Do, yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know if that means tomorrow he's going to say, because we're moving fast, that means today you're my wife. Um, you, I, I don't no know. Harold. Then we see Chad talking to Baba and says, now I no, want to be with Maria. you. it was Maria. It was? That was Maria. It was? It was yeah. girl number one. It was oh, girl shoot. number one. Mm-hmm. So he says, um, I want to be with you, and I want to know if you feel the same. <sighs> and she says, well, you know, we have very different lives. And he says, that's all I need to know. And stands up and walks out. Angrily. Yeah, angrily. Yeah. And then he says, um, in his talking head, he says, the same shit's happening. And I'm done with it. I don't play games. And I said, simmer down. Simmer down, Chad. You met this girl one time? One time. And now you relax. He does. Now we see why, why he has been engaged three times. And he has let it be known that. These women have been the catalyst behind the breakups. It's not, it's not they've all done s- something because they don't like him anymore, don't want to be mm-hmm. with him anymore. They cheated, mm-hmm. this, this, and that. So after seeing that scene, I'm like, okay, maybe we're starting to see a little bit more of Chad. Yeah. And how he is. He seems like a little angry elf. He seems pretty mad. Because he shouldn't be able to gauge anything from the first date that they went on. Nothing one at all. date on both of these girls. The first one, they barely were able to speak to each other. And then the yeah, second one it was with, bad. With Baba, at least they uh, had some whiskey and loosened up a yeah. little, but they had to have the bartender, like, you know, gauge yeah, the that, conversation. That, they needed a third person there. They weren't comfortable enough to talk to one another. Do you have Barbie fingernails? I do. Let me see that. Can you sit that closer? Lower. Can you see Lower. It? That is so cute. You guys, Keisha has hot pink nails with a little white Barbie <laughs> face on it. That is so cute. Sorry, we're you were just waving your hand around, getting mad about Chad. I was like, you got those Barbie oh. nails. That's so cute. And you're like, Arr! are those Barbie nails? <laughs> Record scratch. Chad pissed that's me cute. off. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, that's it for this week. And I got to tell you, we've got two more episodes. So we still have, we got to wrap up on Stanika, Michelle, mm-hmm. uh, Mark, Chad, mm-hmm. Harold, because mm-hmm. we already wrapped up on Susan and Natalie. Yes. So yes, I'm yes, hoping yes. at the end we're we're gonna wrap up these storylines, and I hope on episode 13, two episodes from now, we are gonna get like a screen that shows they better. Like, do other, like at the end of Real Housewives, it tells you what the person's doing. Yeah. Okay. So Mary Payne, you know we gotta end with Bravo Con talk. Okay, let's do it. Everyone wants to know if you got tickets. I did, girl. VIP. I tell you what. And I and I let me I, let me tell you what there was no trick to it. I knew there were that we got that presale code that I told you about. Mm-hmm, got that mm-hmm. presale code. The dog walker came to the door at twelve on the dot, and uh-huh. I knew that I had to be on that computer at twelve on the dot. So I literally jumped up, ran to the door, and said, "I got to be on my computer. I'm trying to get tickets for something." She left the dog. So I came. So I'm telling you, I, I there were like thirty seconds wasted. I wasn't <laughs> right there because you got to be sitting right there, you know, and um. I went to the computer and I logged in to the thing and mm-hmm. then went and clicked two VIP tickets. And then that kicks mm-hmm. me to a next screen. Do you want to do these add-ons, right? Mm-hmm. Bravo Palooza, they had all three days and it was like five in a day that you could pick. So I just picked two o'clock all three days. Mm-hmm. I just figured in my mind, like 12 o'clock too early, four o'clock too late. So I picked two tickets, two o'clock all the way down, clicked mm-hmm. add to cart, went directly to the cart. Then I went to log in and I forgot my password. Oh, 
So I had clicked change password, did that real quick, went back to my cart, clicked credit card, bought it. And all of that took um, four minutes, four minutes. Then I oh went back gosh. to, and so, it, so it confirmed, came to my email, good. Then I went back over to the Bravo, BravoCon Facebook group. Mm-hmm. I, like, I probably like stood up and like took the collars and the leashes off the dogs because they were running around like with their <laughs> leashes on because I was like, I can't talk to you! Went back to my computer, <laughs> went back to the computer, and then it was 12.07, and I texted mm-hmm. you and said, hey, don't forget, mm-hmm. they've got this special code. And then I looked at that page, and people said the tickets were sold out. in seven minutes. It was so I was insane. lucky. I was lucky in that you four were. minutes. I was lucky. So producer James and I got general tickets and then we're meeting a friend who is a bunkie. Uh, we're meeting him there. So he went ahead and got the GA tickets as well. And okay. when I tell you he and I were talking, we felt like we had just completed like three weeks of like homework we hadn't done. We yeah. felt like a chore had been done. And yeah. then when we went back and saw that it was sold out, we were like, Holy shit balls. I'm like, and did you do it on that day? We, that that we pre-sale did it that day. day. Okay. Yeah. And then they sold out. I was like, thank God. They well, the next day, when they the regular sales went on, they sold out in like seven minutes. I'm like, oh holy shit. I'm glad we went ahead and did that. I know. You know? I know. But yeah. here's the thing. What they did last year was they did the exact same thing. They did a pre-sale. I didn't do pre-sale. I went on like whenever was the because I just like forgot or something, or I was recording mm-hmm. or whatever. So I went on the regular sale day right when it came on and got just because Ingrid and I were doing, oh, I, you know what? I didn't even do that because they were only doing three day tickets. I waited until they were doing one day tickets because we only wanted oh. to do a one day. We got a one day general admission ticket mm-hmm. and they were available. So I do know they're, they're releasing the one day ticket. So you could just buy three one day tickets, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. I oh, sh- okay. I, if you want, or if you're only going to be there one day, you can do that. They're going to release those. And then I'm sure those will sell out. And mm-hmm. then I'm sure they'll do it again. It's like somebody said they are gauging, they are gauging it to see how many tickets they sell to see probably like, okay, we did have three stages set up. So now we're going to have five, you know, we'll have five right. things going on instead of two or whatever. Right. Um, somebody was like, and I was like, I don't think anybody should worry because even if you, even if they, start to sell the one day tickets, which I believe will be like this coming Friday, they're going to start selling Mm -hmm. one day tickets. And that'll probably be when the add-ons come up first for people with VIP, then for people that pre-sell general admission. And then for one day, the one day people will be the last people to get watch what happens live tickets or whatever add-ons. Okay. Okay. So if you bought a three day, you get it first. Um, then you'll, then you can do one day. And then I know that even when we were there, when we were there on that general admission day, they were people saying like, they are, you can go up to the ticket counter and say, do you have two tickets for watch what happens? Oh, on Sunday wow. Night? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to tell anybody that do not buy from scalpers. Do not. They have already saw the prices. Their prices. Don't yes. do that. Yeah. I was like, that is insane. Like a, a GA ticket. I saw someone selling one for like $2,000. Yeah, don't do that. Go That's to the crazy. BravoCon. Go to the BravoCon Facebook group, which is like mm-hmm. eighteen thousand people in that group. Mm-hmm. That is like a safe space because the moderators are super good about flagging anything people being sus or being weird or trying to sell. Like if it's a two hundred fifty dollars ticket, they're trying to sell it for five hundred. No, yeah, we know what the face value is. Don't do that. That's right. So go to that BravoCon Facebook book and group and join. They're let they let anybody in as long as you like answer the questions and agree not to be right. an asshole. And Wait. I almost didn't make it past that part. They're agreeing not to be an asshole. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> wait, wait until wait until this next round of ticket sales, the one day tickets. And then if you get if you get to October and it's still crazy, then mm. maybe consider buying from a scalper. But I would wait until at least October. Okay. Because okay. the excitement the excitement will go down. True. You're it's absolutely like any, right. All the hype because people want to get a hotel. They want to get their flight. They want to. Yes. They want to be sure. I, I mean, you could have a hotel flight, go there, and probably still get in day of. I bet. You think so? I do. I do. I wonder what hotel they're all staying at. Caesars. Oh, what? Yeah, they I think are? all staying. I think they're all staying at Caesars. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we might see them in the hallway, girl. I. You may be like. I don't know. On, Okay, we know they're going to be at like top level and all of that. Well, and, they're going to be on a different floor than us, but you know, we might see them in an elevator. In an elevator, be like, "Hey, Jesse, <laughs> hey, hey, Jesse." Okay, so some people have been messaging me asking about the Bunky meetup, and I, I don't know anything. 
Um, it is, it is something that we are planning for, um, Thursday night before Amy Phillips cabaret show. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say where, when, how, all that, because we're, we're, you know, working with the, um, the venue and all that right now. So it's, I, I can't say specifically cause it's not nailed down, mm -hmm. but what we're working on is a pre event to go along with Amy Phillips cabaret show on Thursday night. Cause people will be in town Thursday with nothing to do. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what we're hoping for. So um okay. she's gonna do her cabaret if it goes according to plan three nights, uh Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So Okay. It's good because it's really good for her because lots of people won't have any plans at night. I mean, BravoCon is over like at five, six o'clock. Oh, then lots that's of people, early. Yeah, it's an all day thing. And then if you don't have plans for anything that night, people will be going out to restaurants, casino and stuff, going out to the club. But mm -hmm. um, going to see her thing will be good. I've seen it. It's hilarious. So, okay, really funny. I have to get tickets to go. I'll have to get tickets. As soon, as soon as she has something to announce, she'll be able to announce it. And as soon as we can announce our add-on thing, I'll announce it. But that's awesome. what we're going to do. And it's not tons and tons of tickets will be available. So I will, of course, announce it. Over on Pink Shade Prime, and there'll probably be a code if you're a member over there, Patreon Supercast. And then I'll, whenever I can, I'll announce it here on the free feed as well. So, oh, so much going on. I freaking know. So I'm really glad that I'm sick right now. So I'll have this sickness. It'll get out of my system so I can get going on with the rest of my summer and my fall. Yes, 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 yes. I'm excited. I'm excited. And we too. get to be together for the We're first time. We're going to be in ever. person together. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna fan girl out. For what? You, Keisha. That is the. That's the dumbest thing you've ever said. You know what? I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. You are so dumb. You are <laughs> I'm gonna fan girl. I'm gonna like I'm meeting Mary. Kay. You're gonna fan girl out on me, who you talk to every single week. It's different because you have to remember. I started off listening to you guys. I know, but that doesn't I was, mean. I was that... a fan first. Yeah, but, but it's going to be like, it's just going to be something. It's going to be magical. I feel like it's going to be magical. It's going to shine down on us. Yeah. I feel, Girl. I, I do. I do. Yeah, I do. I rebuke that. I what rebuke is, it. Whatever. I'm going to pick you up and twirl you around and play matchmaker, matchmaker, <laughs> make me a match. That's what's going to happen. So. All right. All right. On that note, I'll talk to Here you later uh, for Love During Lockup. Okay. Bye.